Come join us at bbmglobalnetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Change Zone with your host, Gail McDonald and Susan Sneath. Gail and Susan have created a space where you can explore and test out ideas to step into the possibilities and resources of the change before us. Be your best, make your best life, and bring out the best in yourself and others. So please welcome the hosts of The Change Zone, Gail McDonald and Susan Sneath. Hey folks, I'm Susan Sneath with my co-host Gail McDonald. Welcome, we've got a great episode lined up for you today. You're listening to The Change Zone. We're coming to you live on the Bold Brave TV network and here we are, episode 17, Change Yourself, then Watch Others Change. And we've invited a, oh, a mastermind in with us, Carrie Twig. She's a best-selling author. She's a mindfulness-based story coach, and yet the best part is Carrie really walks her talk and lives the stories she tells. Today, she's going to tell stories of change. She's going to tell how she helps folks find their awesome stories and then express it in all phases of their life. She's going to also tell how she helps folks figure out how they experience what for them is happy and also how to bring others along with them too. You know, it wouldn't be the same without the others, so we'd like to just extend a thank you to our audience, those who've been with us and newcomers. You're welcome in the change zone. If you have a question or an insight, you could feel free to connect with us. Our phone number is 1-866-451-1451. We'd be happy to hear from you. Well, story, uh, Carrie has taught what she does in theaters and universities and even in a change house. A change house, that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> well, boat house, maybe she's that's getting ready to go swimming. You never know. It could be, I mean, honestly, we've got some stuff lined up for you today. <laughs> And on that note, welcome, Carrie. And here, I'll throw the fish to you, Gail. Carry on. <laughs> sure. Have me talk, and I can I can barely open my mouth and smile. Um, yeah, welcome, Carrie. Uh, as you can see, we're going to have a little bit of fun today. But Susan and I are both so excited for you to be with us. And this topic is really hot. And I'm sure, Susan, you would agree with me that during our time working with folks with their careers, this is by far one of the most, most challenging activities that a person will ever have to do is write a story, write a story about their their career pass, past and, and ha, you know, how on earth do they relate that to what they're going to do moving forward? Very challenging, challenging situation, yet you have broken it down beautifully in your book. So we are so excited to have you here with us. And to start off, Carrie, I'm the forever curious one, and I would love to hear a little bit about your history and how you actually came to be in this particular line of work. Yeah, I don't think anyone ever sets out to be a career coach or a storytelling <laughs> coach. Like, I don't think... It's ever, you know, uh, I always wanted as a child, I always wanted to be um, an acting teacher. Um, and I would start out even as a child, like teaching, teaching little dance routines, a little scenes to worms <laughs> in my driveway <laughs> with a pink ghetto blaster. Uh, so that's what I did. I just became a drama teacher um, and did that <laughs> for many, many Many, many years. <laughs> I'm getting a visual of you doing that. And <laughs> yeah. the problem is, is I'm visualizing you doing it at this age. So I don't know oh, if that's yes. a good thing. Yeah. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> Carrie, that's delightful. So how did yeah. you proceed from there uh, and then into the 
drama teaching. <laughs> yeah, well, I went, so went, yeah, into drama teaching. Um, <laughs> like, even in high school, I did an internship where I went to a uh, elementary school and to teach them drama to see if it's even what I wanted to do and study in university. So, like, was already testing and really being a career coach before before I could. Um, so as a drama teacher, though, I wasn't that interested in teaching people how to be actors. I got really interested in how you could use drama methods. So different theater games, different exercises, different voice, different things with your body to help people understand themselves better and help them express themselves. Um, so I was, and I would also go into schools and help people like use drama to teach different things like the water cycle, things like that. Um, but I was teaching a class called Acting for Film and this adult came in, I think it was week six of the class. And he said, Carrie, I got promoted at work. And I was like, yeah, way to go. Um, and, and he said, and it's because of this class. And I went, oh. Uh, like, what do you, what do you mean? And he said, yeah, like, because of this class, and the way I'm holding myself, uh, the way that I'm speaking, you know, my bosses said that they noticed my presence. And, um, yeah, and then I got, I got, I got a promotion, because the way I'm showing up. And it was then that I realized this connection between drama, and maybe not just teaching water cycle, but really teaching people how it could work in their careers. Um, but I was like, I'm this t -t drama teacher. How am I going to get a job helping business people? Um, so I did the most art-friendly business degree, which is a, a HR certificate, and did most of it like online while, while working. Um, did the HR certificate and landed a job at a corporate firm, you know, put on a pencil skirt, uh, played the role of, of corporate career coach. Um, yeah, and, and in that, I started to infuse some stories, learned how to career coach, a lot of things about resumes, um, kind of became a star of that office, and then uh, and then I quit. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect, Carrie. We are going to take a short break right now, and when we come back, we will hear more of the pencil skirt. I'm really interested to know if you had the high heels to go with it, because you can't wear a pencil skirt without high heels. And uh, so I'm Gail McDonald, along with my co-host, Susan Smith, and our very delightful guest, Carrie Twig. We are in the Change Zone live on Bull Brave TV Network, and we will be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio.
Welcome back, folks. I'm Susan Sneath with my co-host Gail McDonald and our special guest, Carrie Twig. You're listening to The Change Zone. We're coming to you live on the Bold Brave TV network. And Carrie, I've got three things for you. All right. I want you to tell us about pencil skirts. I want you to tell us about how you got going and then you quit. And then I want you to tell us about how presence presence of mind ties it all together. Can you handle it? Yeah. Um, so I'm going to tie in Gail's comment too about the shoes. So I got, Please do. I got the pencil skirt and then I bought these shoes that had heels on them and I had never had heely shoes before. Um, and the shoes and one day my manager called me in, I think it was like my second month at the office. And she said, Oh, we need to talk about your shoes. Uh, and I was like, what? I love them. Like they're leather, they have heels. And she said, they're, they're, um, they're scuffy. <laughs> and I was like, what? And they were these beautiful, like leather shoes, like where the leather had been like rubbed on rocks, like, <laughs> like very beautiful, but more, I think more typical to like, you know, an art teacher than a corporate HR firm. And I just didn't, I didn't know. Uh, and then the thing that I knew that I knew I didn't fit, and I think it talks about, I think it's connected to presence, is she said, they undermine your credibility. <sighs> and I was like, mm. I thought I was wearing the right thing. Mm -hmm. I feel good in some of the things I'm doing here. Like, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm making a difference. I feel like I'm connecting with clients, mm -hmm. but I don't look the part. Mm. And even some of the clients would say that, like, eh, like, what? You? <laughs> you're wonderful, but what are you doing here? You know? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I think that that's one thing that sometimes when you want to use your, your skills, sometimes you are on the right track. You're just not in the right place. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's that's fair. Mm -hmm. um, what was your second question? Sorry, and the that second was the question answer. was when you you got up speed. So mm -hmm. you got going and then you quit. Yeah. And you did it with presence. You did it with power. So to yeah. me, power and presence go together. Yeah. So after that moment, I went and bought it's like went and bought regular whatever shoes. Um, wore the shoes, played the part, um, and then noticed where I was making a difference with clients and the kinds of workshops I would get. Um yeah, just the caliber of conversations that I was having that other coaches weren't. And I went, oh, I'm kind of made for this. And there are some things in the corporate culture that I was like, and I'm not made for that. And so what I did is I, like, I quit. But I think it's that I, I had found I had found my groove. And and I I don't think I realized the, the, um, the value of values when mm. I first went. Yeah. And then I left. But within 10 days of leaving, I got a call from one of our clients like who was an HR director and she called and she said, Carrie, um, are you still coaching? And I was like, maybe I moved on to this government job. And she said, because my my husband needs a coach. Um, and I remember the way that you were in our when you would give us reports on our on the clients we sent your way. Um, and I think he'd really like working with you. I can't, he's not really, he's not really a coach person. And I was like, okay. Um, and I met him in a bar and we went through a process and I helped him find his story and help him find his presence. Um, and he landed a director of marketing job. And I think that's also a bit of the, the presence piece um, that I think presence has to be with when you, when you know what makes you unique and when you show up with it and mm. not just in like you have a memorized script, but in the way that you move and the way that you like, it's your it's your special thing. And I think people lose their presence. They don't have it when they're pretending that their pencil skirt. <laughs> wearing, <laughs> <laughs> and they're not. <laughs> it's not like I think that's when I think. Like, yeah, there's rules in each industry, but I think when you take the rules and try so hard to fit in that it kind of makes you uninteresting and you mm -hmm. can't have your impact because you're not you're not free enough to, to, to make your impact. Right. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I think when you can find what your value is, how the company or person, um, how they benefit from that, and then you show up and like, this is how I do it with no apologies, that's presence. Mm. You know, you like both mm -hmm. you lose it, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you have it, right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So then yeah. now I'm curious now as yeah. to where the story proceeded with this kind of presence, because then you you moved past that government job. You wrote a book. Tell me more about this story about helping people. Yeah, so because I was popular with all those dads. Um, <laughs> get jobs we'd meet in bars give them career advice and and then what started to happen is that um i was like well, maybe this could be a thing and the government job i had our froze our program got froze um because a new uh new government party had come in and paused a lot of the programs and so i wasn't busy at work and so i was like okay like and i just thought it was going to be this fun little thing on the side so i just started to post articles uh i was me <laughs> you know i showed my tattoos mm -hmm. you know i have this young face and this natural gray hair like weird look um mm -hmm. where every other coach was posing like you know with their arms crossed mm -hmm. i was like ah! <laughs> You know, <laughs> and i think i had this i showed up with this voice that people who were who never thought they would work with a coach thought I could work with her. Um, yeah, and then I just started to track what I was doing, put it into a book. You know, the book became a bestseller, you know, and then and then I kind of quit that, too. <laughs> Carrie, oh, what a what a journey! I know. I'm certain that our listeners have multiple questions, as I do, and I will pose them when we get back. The first one I'm curious about is the value of values. I love mm -hmm. how you said that. I'm your host, Gail McDonald, along with my co-host Susan Sneath and our very special guest, Carrie Twig. You are in the Change Zone live on Bull Brave TV Network. Stay tuned. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside, you know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to The Change Zone. I'm Gail McDonald, along with my co-host, Susan Sneath and our special, absolutely delightful guest, Carrie Twig. Before the break, I had said to Carrie, I have a couple of questions. And the first one, Carrie, would be the value of values. And I've over the years learned how important it is to identify 
what our values are. And many folks I've worked with, and myself included many years ago, really didn't see the connection and how valuable it was to know what is most important to you in your life and how does that even relate to our work? So what can you tell us about that, Carrie? Yeah, and you're not you're not alone. I think I think this was the biggest I think what happens is that when people think about careers, they think about the title, maybe the money, the office, the company they'll keep, you know? And when you get there, the thing that actually the way you judge your success is how it feels. And I think that's values, right? Um, because I have, uh, you know, I've been there and I've worked with people and um, who seem like very impressive, but they don't feel good inside. And it's because the work that they're doing or the company that they work for or the people that they serve aren't in line with their values. And values are really just like, this is what's important to me. And and making sure that that matches, you know, within your work. So I'm like, that's that's the values of value. So if if I have a value um, where it's really important that the work that I do has a deep impact and that it has life changing work for for me, I'm not going to be happy with a best selling book. <laughs> right. I'm not going to be happy being like have a good reputation at the HR firm because that's not deep enough for me because my my values are much different or someone who values um like values a lot of money they might be fine with those things right and and I think it's worth I think it's worth um tuning into yeah and it's it's really and it's um it's how you judge it and it becomes the story it becomes the story that you tell yourself is like the story that you tell yourself about the work that you're meant to do and what work is going to make you happy, the work that's going to make you happy is going to be one that is a combination of your skills um, and what you value. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And as a result of what you've just said, yes. I've just developed another question. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> because I do remember reading in your book where you where you, where you talked about not giving someone a list and I've been doing that for a very long time when I'm working mm -hmm. with folks that are interested in understanding what their values are. And the list is extensive. I think now it can be a little bit overwhelming. And you do talk about not using a list. So what might be a process that our listeners could benefit by to help them identify what is really important to me at a very, very deep level, something that means a lot to me in life. How do I even find out about that? Well, I think you can, like some people just know. So we're all pretty like intuitive. So sometimes, you know, if you've been, I think the issue comes up is if you've been lying to yourself. Um, mm -hmm. If you've been lying to yourself, a great exercise, which is the same exercise it is to find your, um, like to find your story and your super skills and the foundation of your story is to think about work like moments at work where you felt alive or you felt great and it might actually be outside of work so it might it might be like oh when I was coaching this you know bring at team this is where I came alive or I helped someone help my neighbor uh, shovel his driveway right like it might come out in different work but looking for moments where you felt where you felt alive, where you felt in tune, where you felt like mm, I could do this even if I wasn't getting paid for it. And zoning in like really to that moment. So almost if we were a film, take that moment and zoom <laughs> to extreme close up mm -hmm. and just go what mattered most there. And often a, a word or value can be attached to that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I also, I know, I know, Susan would find this hard, but I think finding <laughs> finding three <laughs> three to live by and model because that's that if you like I think what happens is people see a huge list of 70 different values. They choose 20 and there's no way to really uh, track without getting completely exhausted living in line with 20 values. Mm -hmm. But if you go, Mm, when I'm at work, it's really important to me that I make things more efficient, that I make uh, a difference, 
and I share ideas. Those are trackable, mm-hmm. right? And then even without having the job yet, you can even practice that in your life, right? Did I make something more efficient at home? Did I share an idea? I can't remember the third one I gave, but you could track you could you could track those. And if you start to to use those as your guide of what you model and share with everyone, you're actually already sharing your story. You're mm-hmm. living it. And you can experience some like self-satisfaction even before, even if like external circumstances haven't changed because you're you're enacting in a way that's that's in line with your values. And then when a role comes up or an opportunity comes up that really is in line, you're primed, you know, and they know and you you have a better chance and you're not playing pretend, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I heard two lessons. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Keep it simple. Yeah. And be proactive, be prepared. Whether you land a job or not, keep working at being the best version of you. Yeah. And keep creating mm. stories. And Susan, I'm going to toss it over to you now and mm-hmm. uh, see what else uh, you might have to ask Carrie. Mm-hmm. I love the part about keeping it simple. Yeah. And and as a matter of fact, I, I happen to have three values that I make sure I can deliver by nine o'clock every morning. One is love, give and take. Am mm. I taking care of myself? Am I doing the things? The other one is fun. So I make mm. sure, am I having fun? Have I, have I lifted my own spirits? Am I going to wear something that, that lifts my spirits? And then just that sense of, of everything is connected. Some people could mm. call it spirituality. Some people could say it's curiosity. However, those three and what you're talking about, being proactive, wouldn't you say, Carrie, and maybe this is what we'll talk when we come back, about how when you have those values, you can take those from your stories into an interview and beyond. Absolutely. Okay, so we're going to take a brief break. I'm Susan Sneath with my co-host Gail McDonald. And our special guest, Carrie Twig, you're listening to The Change Zone. We're coming to you live on the Bold Brave TV network. When we come back, Gary, uh, Carrie is going to share with us how she uses these tools of values to take you into the interview uh, process and beyond. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Welcome back to The Change Zone, everyone. I'm Gail McDonald, along with Susan Sneath and our special guest, Carrie Twig. 
stories, values, how do they all relate? And before we went on break, Susan mentioned interviews. Oh my goodness. And then maybe resumes. There's the things spinning all over the place. And I know, Carrie, that you are going to make some really good sense of this for our viewers. Yeah. So when, um, so I think in terms of the stories and values, they actually come together in both your resume and your interview. And I actually see the resume and interview as being like, we're, we're, we're good friends, right? Because mm -hmm. the resume is just a, it's a highlight of all of your favorite skills. And you're telling the stories that are of the highest value to you. And it's the work that you want to do. I think where people maybe get a little bit led astray on resume writing is they tend to write everything that they've done. And if you don't want to do any of that work again, don't put it on your resume. Mm. Um, like I had a client and he was fantastic at um, research. But he kept on, on his resume, he kept on just telling story after story, and he did in the interview too. He told story after story about um, hitting high sales numbers, about you know hitting these targets, about like um, winning big accounts, these big celebration stories. But what actually made him happy, what he actually valued, was doing the deep research so he could give a strategy to the rest of his team. So with that information, right, I go, I know what you value. I know what you're good at, know your happiest work moments. Then we just filled his resume with it. And instead of being like top sales expert, we changed it to um, like sales professional, like uh, who thrives doing deep research. So the story that he's telling, he's highlighting the thing that he values, helping the company to understand, you know, what he brings that's different from everyone else. And then when he goes to the interview, he can he can weave that in. And the way that you can help them see it's important is the bullet points are just like little, they're just little scenes from your career, right? Like did deep research here, created the strategy, shared this, you know, went under, <laughs> went, you know, under, um, understood the customer's needs. So he told those sorts of stories. And that's really all you need to do at the resume and at the and like in the resume and in the interview. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we get stuck on like trying to impress or what's the right script. Mm -hmm. um, but really the the you understand yourself, you highlight the stories that matter to you and also matter to the like and also matter to the company, right? You want there has to be some sort of I can't tell sales stories to, you know, someone who, who doesn't want me to be a salesperson. So they have to be a match there. And then be modeling it in your everyday interactions, right? So you're really living it and then bring that to the interview. I think what I found is that yeah, I can teach people how to mine their own stories to figure out what makes them incredible. And I can help them write those into, you know, beautiful bullet points on their resume that sounds like them and makes them cry because they look so good. And <laughs> and usually they, they'll they be like, wow, this seemed like I was just doing my job. And I say, yeah, most people who are just doing their job are often the most incredible workers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's often the people who are like, I'm amazing. That I'm like, eh, take a step <laughs> back. <laughs> right? Because... Yeah. rarely do we just do the job, you know, mm -hmm. so we can mm -hmm. highlight those stories in the resume. Then in the interview, you get to expand on it. The part I noticed as I was teaching those strategies is that people would go, OK, I feel good. I feel good about what I'm going to externally say. But when it came to getting over getting over themselves to actually um, apply for something, or when they got rejected with something that seemed like a good fit. Um, or I was like, you know, on LinkedIn, tell some stories because no one knows you and no one's going to get excited about you, you know, if they don't know you. So you might want to start showing up there. And they're like, no, people are going to judge me. That it was all this internal self-talk that was holding people back more than the strategies. And it's like the strategies could only take you so far and there needed to be there needed to be something else. 
Um, and I also found too that people were landing what they said were dream jobs. And then mm -hmm. a couple weeks later, they were complaining about them. They were like, eh, I don't think it was the right move. Mm -hmm. And I started to go, well, maybe it's not even the situation. Like maybe it's the person. Mm -hmm. Right. And how could we how yeah so I started to you know I, I felt like I had mastered all the strategy stuff and went oh what's missing is heart what's missing in all of this is is heart and I think that needs that there needs to be a place for that um in transitions and change mm -hmm. well, I was looking at um, I just made a note here it's like Carrie what you were starting to understand is that their internal narrative Yes, needed to change. Mm -hmm. So I uh, look at you're a mindfulness story coach. We're looking at mindset. Yes. And then uh, and so how did you go about addressing that? Well, I found that, you know, when I when I knew about like mindfulness, I kind of knew all I knew was like the meditation of like sit and watch your breath. And I was like, how is sitting and watching my breath gonna make me <laughs> feel calm, especially, you know, when I'm trying to calm down before I do a presentation or I share skills about myself. Um, and so I, I like looked at all the kind of schools of mindfulness and I was like, I want something that's like backed by science because I can't, I come from theater, I don't need another fluff, <laughs> like fluff degree. I need something, right? Um, <laughs> And I found I found this person called Shinzen Young, um, and he led this meditation uh, that actually like changed everything for me because before him I never thought I could meditate. Um, so I I attended this free like I was going to a lot of free mindfulness things for I don't know five years, found mm -hmm. this teacher, um, and then when I realized that he was also studying like neuroscience. Mm. that he was also like this was scientifically backed I mm. was like ah I think I can weave this in with you the stories yeah. yeah beautiful yeah. oh well excellent. I'm I'm going to um, invite us to take a mindful moment to think about this I'm Susan Sneath with my co-host Gail McDonald and the wonderful Carrie Twig you're listening to the change zone we're coming to you live on the bold brave tv network when we come back Carrie's going to continue to weave together the threads of what am I thinking what can I do about it and what does science have to do with anything what if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy sense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio.
Welcome back, folks. I'm Susan Sneath with my co-host Gail McDonald and the wonderful Carrie Twig. You're listening to The Change Zone. We're coming to you live on the Bold Brave TV network. So up until now, the story as it has unfolded is Carrie has carried along doing some things, got things going, and then she quit. Carried on, moved along, carried did other things, helped people do some things in another area, and then quit and moved on. She began to look at the story that you could tell to get into the job process, what values play a part. And yet she was noticing there was an internal narrative that needed to be changed. So I said, what does thinking, what does science, and what does mindfulness have to do with this, Carrie? Well, I think everything. <laughs> I think everything, right? So yeah. I think the biggest the biggest thing is that I learned through these programs, well, first, like how to break up happiness. Before I go into how do you define happiness, I think it's important to know that there's a variety of practices that you can do. And if the breath one doesn't work, there are practices that are specifically just for appreciating what is. Right. So like right now we can take a minute and just here. I just ask you to take a moment mm -hmm. and pay attention to the sounds that are in the room that you're in. And when you notice one. Just say here is it to label it. Mm -hmm. Take a moment. What does your life sound like right now? Hmm. So that, <laughs> if yeah. you did it, just got yeah. you out of your head, and you realized in that moment, all is well, right? Mm -hmm. And so often the story, if you were sitting there with the story of like, when's the show going to be over? I have to go do something, or worried about, hey, when's my next interview? Like, if you're whirling in your head, actually, you could stop that. Mm -hmm. And just go, what does my life sound like right now? Right. So there's techniques where you can learn how to appreciate what is. And that actually immediately gives people relief. Mm. And uh, and the, the, the higher you grow that skill. So as you grow the skill of concentration and sensory clarity and equanimity, that relief can turn to fulfillment. So that as you start things that... Um, made you maybe slightly happy or maybe maybe just neutral start to be more fulfilling because you're noticing them right mm -hmm. and then there's practices that are just about tr transcending which are pretty fun uh, which allows you to kind of go oh I'm more connected to the the rest of the world and the universe than than I thought before mm -hmm. and you can have some cool experiences that help you get out of your head there's um, practices that are just for expression, so that help you be a more natural expressor, expressor, <laughs> better storyteller. <laughs> and then there's practices just for nurturing positivity, just for mm. figuring out and, and learning like, hey, when I smile, I feel that in my belly. Wow, I can access this no matter what else is going on in the world, right? And the power that that can have to to go so you can um systematically train yourselves in those four areas and it's yeah it's it's been scientifically proven to reduce stress um it they did a study um at a like at a workplace i think it was like data engineers who are like who had like tons of stress during um like a merger Mm -hmm. And that they did these simple practices and that they felt they got relief. They could feel fulfillment even in a time of influx. And I don't know a more influx time than well right now, right? Mm -hmm. And in career transition. And it's like 12 minutes a day of doing, mm -hmm. of doing these practices. And what I noticed is that when my clients were open to it, so yeah, we were doing strategy, yeah, we were practicing, you know, stories that they're going to tell and what they're going to say on LinkedIn. But when they combined it with mindfulness, whoosh, like they, I'm like, they just took off. Um, and what was beautiful is that they didn't really need me anymore because they had this practice that they could rely on. So then when they went to an interview and felt nervous instead of not knowing what to do or to try and adopt a like, um, 
breathe deep now when it, it wasn't working. They had strategies that they mm-hmm. could go to, right? And yeah, there's, there's, you know, <laughs> trying to give you an overview in a couple yeah. of minutes of a whole, of a whole system, but oh, yeah. that is, that's the biggest thing is that I felt like I've seen clients even before they land the job mm-hmm. can feel happier um, before they have it, whereas it used to depend on actually getting the thing. And the thing doesn't make you happy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what's beautiful about that is that when you do it that way, when you do it mindfully and you're not just doing scripts, is that everyone around you, they they resonate with that. They go, mm-hmm. oh, this person is showing up in a way that I didn't, I hadn't seen them in this light before. Um mm-hmm. I like there, there's something, there's some depth to them. There's some realness to them. There's, um, I don't want to say like authenticity, right? But that when you start showing up for real, real, people can tell. So I'll even compare it to what I was doing with career stories when I was like popular in a LinkedIn top voice is I would show up and I would give, like, I, I think I wanted to be I think I just want to be accepted and I like that people liked my energy and I wanted to make it like I was like I make it quick and easy you know just do the story thing it's quick and easy and the kinds of people who wanted to work with me wanted quick and easy results now I'm not a quick I, you know me, I'm like, I like depth <laughs> and so I had to change the way that I was communicating with my audience and the way I was showing up so that people would go, oh, yeah, she's fun and she's smiley, um, she's quirky, but there's some depth to it and mm-hmm. there's some wisdom there. And mm-hmm. the kinds of people who want to work with me and the kinds of opportunities and jobs I get offered to me now have such depth and wisdom like that. Um, and it's how it's by the story I'm telling and how I'm showing up and some mindfulness. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely, Carrie. It's such a beautiful example of you have done whatever you have done to bring you to where you are now. Uh, I would love to hang out with you for another (laughs) three hours, but we're going to take a short break right now. And uh, when we come back, we're going to put a bow on all of this and hear a little bit more from Carrie. I'm Gail McDonald, along with my co-host Susan Sneath and our wonderful guest, Carrie Twig. You're in the change zone, listening live on Bold Brave TV Network. Stay tuned. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app.
Welcome back, everyone. I am your host, Gail McDonald, along with my co-host, Susan Sneath, live in the Change Zone on Bull Brave TV Network. And we are here with a very special guest, Carrie Twig. And we are almost at the end of our show, Carrie. And I'm I'm certain our, our listeners and our viewers have had as much fun as I have. And Susan, I'm I'm sure you've had uh, quite a few quite a few laughs as well, Carrie. It's been absolutely delightful yet informative. And on that note, Carrie, what might you tell uh, our our audience about how they might be able to get started, or how they even might how they might be able to keep going um, with some of the the tasks that they need to do in this uh, career planning situation? Yeah, I think the first thing, like um, that the question I shared earlier of just like, when was the moment that I felt alive at work? When did I feel, when did I, yeah, feel, inc- feel incredible? Ask yourself that, right? Sit, ask yourself it, write it down. I say on an index card, like that story down, come back the next day, do it again, write another story. And after seven days, look at those stories and see what skill keeps popping up. Because that's going to, you go, ah, if you can choose, like, find three skills in all those stories that connect you, that's your core story. Mm -hmm. And then your work is just to bring it into everything else that you do. Mm -hmm. So that even if you change your sector, your specialty, you still bring those skills, Mm -hmm. right? What I bring, yeah, what I bring as a drama teacher is the same thing I bring as a meditation teacher. It's the same I bring as a coach. I'm just putting a different skirt on it <laughs> yeah a different pencil skirt right yeah so carrie i have one more question and then i'm going to toss it over to susan um so m- my question is about writing it down yeah. and i've had some folks say well i don't like to write i want to put it in my computer i know there's value in pen to paper what could you tell our viewers about that yeah so if so if you use pen and paper all day then go on your computer if not uh, do it like do it old school because there's a there's some connection and I don't know the right study. Um, I think I talk about it in my book, but that that it releases something something else, right? And this is like I'm like this is core work. So just using tools in your hands is the best way. Um, if it's really hard, you could record it. It's just harder harder to keep track of of that story, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, just a little uh, tip for folks. You could find Carrie Twig on LinkedIn. You can find her on her website, career-stories.com. And she also does a, a uh, an offering called the Career Contentment Club, which is delightful. And then we're going to just give you a little bit of a peek into March. March 7th, we're going to have a wonderful author again, and an idea generator, Dave Walker. He's the author of a book, Mondays Don't Have to Suck. (laughs) And he shares his trials and tribulations. He has two lists of best practices, one to create or hide inside the nasty zone, and the one to crawl out and create a life of meaning and purpose, which he calls the much nicer zone. So for all of you who've been with us, uh, we've just enjoyed having you here. You can connect with us after the show. Our website is changezonetalk.com, changezonetalk at gmail.com. And uh, Gail, anything last to add in? No, just a beautiful thank you to Carrie. It's been absolutely a delight having you on the show carrie thank you so very yeah. much this, thank you thank this you has folks been great thank you. all the best everyone you're welcome in the change zone this has been the change zone with host gail mcdonald and susan sneath come join the conversation each week and reveal how our sense of personal space habits purpose and people shape our destinies and our comfort zones. Everyone is welcome here in the Change Zone. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.